When Sarah Polk's niece, Joanna Rucker, arrived in Washington for an extended stay with her relatives in the White House, she was quick to comment on the whirl of social activity in the city, where, she said, there were balls and dinners and visiting enough to satiate the gayest of the gay. The White House under Sarah Polk was no exception to the rule of constant social activity, but the nature of social life at the White House had changed significantly with the start of the Polk administration. In contrast to the lively parties held by the previous First Lady, Julia Tyler, the devoutly Presbyterian Sarah Polk at once banned hard liquor and dancing in the White House. In response to protests against the ban on dancing, Mrs. Polk replied, To dance in these rooms would be undignified, and it would be respectful neither to the house nor to the office. How indecorous it would seem for dancing to be going on in one apartment, while in another we were conversing with dignitaries of the Republic or ministers of the Gospel. Visiting on the Sabbath was also suspended, though this may have had just as much to do with preserving the President's fragile health as with Sarah's religious convictions. This by no means meant that social activity was lacking in the White House. Two nights of the week were set apart to receive anyone that wished to come to the White House to spend the evening. Diplomatic dinners were common, as were dinners honoring literary guests, and all social events were given with the elegance and restraint that Mrs. Polk felt befitted the White House. At various social events, Joanna Rucker wrote of meeting Secretary of the Navy and historian George Bancroft, about whom Joanna wrote, I should never take him for an historian. He is the greatest ladies' man in the city. Of a diplomatic dinner, Joanna wrote of the ministers and their wives, particularly of the Russian minister, whose wife was most elegantly dressed with $50,000 worth of diamonds on. The diary of one dinner guest, Mrs. J. E. Dixon, records the details of one evening. Mrs. Polk received us in the circular blue room, furnished with gilded armchairs and couches covered with blue and white satin damask. The always fashionable Sarah wore a dress of dark blue velvet with Brussels lace trimming at the neck, and under sleeves to match, and a long Brussels lace scarf reaching to the ground nearly. There were forty guests, and the dinner table was as handsome as any I ever saw in proportion to its size. There were two hundred chandeliers, candelabras, and figures round the grand center ornament, all of which were of gilt burnished and very brilliant with vases of flowers. For dinner it was served, everything one can imagine, all served in silver dishes with silver tureens. The china was white and gold and blue, with a crest, the eagle of course, and the dessert plates were marine blue and gold, with a painting in the center of fruits and flowers. The glassware was very handsome blue and white, finely cut, and pink champagne, gold sherry, green hock, Madeira, the ruby port, and Saturn formed a rainbow round each plate. Mrs. Polk took a keen interest in politics, and much to the dislike of some ladies, often retired to discuss politics with the men after dinner, rather than gossip with their wives. As an intelligent and well-educated woman, Mrs. Polk frequently took part in lively political discussions, but managed to remain a non-threatening, ladylike presence by cloaking many of her opinions in, Mr. Polk thinks so. Indeed, she was such an astute political observer that future President Franklin Pierce once stated that he would rather discuss politics with Sarah than with the President. While Sarah's interest in politics and lively discussion was her strength as a hostess, she took much less of an interest in the domestic details. And one frequently cited story, a state dinner was held at which Mrs. Polk was so engaged in conversations that she failed to notice that there were no napkins at the table. Despite such occasional kinks in state dinners, Mrs. Polk always remained poised and gracious. When gas lighting was installed in the White House, it naturally failed during a party. Mrs. Polk simply moved the party into a room that had remained without the new lighting, and the party continued by candlelight. Sarah Polk's tenure as First Lady was characterized by a respect that grew largely out of her role as White House hostess. Her restrictions on drinking and dancing, along with her personal restrictions against horse racing and theater attendance, did not seem harsh. Rather, they seemed an attempt to maintain the dignity of the President's, and thus the nation's house. Mrs. Polk's emphasis on the respectability of social life as First Lady 
when combined with her intelligence and social graces, created a sense of dignity in all social affairs at the White House during the Polk administration.